coming up. Nonetheless, CSIS was briefing uh, Government of Canada clients that were deemed relevant, presumably the Prime Minister's Department, the PCO, and you had said that although there might be other agencies or departments who may be better suited to brief members of Parliament, but CSIS would have the role of facilitating or leading discussions around uh, arranging such briefings. So did that happen? Now, there was a, a shocking confirmation um, that proxies of Modi's government interfered in two recent Conservative leaderships. Now, this isn't new information. CSIS briefed the Prime Minister on February 9, 2021, about foreign interference activities by the Beijing regime, more specifically involving efforts to manipulate Canadian media, including, quote, paying to publish media articles without attribution, sponsoring media travel to the PRC, pressuring journalists to withdraw articles, and creating false accounts on social media to spread disinformation, end of quote. Uh, did you brief the Prime Minister on February 9th, 2021? Was it you? The um, interviewer said that you had just uh, said that because, and they were talking about the leader of the Conservative Party, said just because your leader is briefed on intelligence does not mean that they can't act on it. Given, uh, I, I would like to give notice of a, of a motion, Mr. Chair. The Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs order the production of all relevant memoranda, briefing notes, emails, records of conversations, and any other relevant documents from departments and agencies, including the Canadian Security Intelligence Service Service and Communications Security Establishment Canada concerning interactions with Conservative Party of Canada officials and representatives on the topic of foreign interference. This guy's garage. Like and subscribe. CSIS actively, actively investigates a variety of cyber actors, including from or associated with China, Russia, Iran, and India. Regardless of who is directing their activities, cyber threat actors employ a range of technologies and techniques to exploit weaknesses in information systems, target individuals to gain unauthorized access to systems and networks, or leverage infrastructure in Canada to achieve their broader strategic and geopolitical goals at the detriment of Canada. Mr. Vino, on November 19, 2021, CSIS issued a classified analytical brief to 35 Government of Canada clients on the topic of the Beijing-directed APT-31 cyber attack campaign. Of the 35 Government of Canada clients who received the briefing, did that include the Prime Minister's National Security and Intelligence Advisor? Mr. Chair, I do not have the, the specific um, distribution list, but I can say that, uh, generally speaking, such a product would indeed be distributed to the Privy Council Office, and that would include the National Security Intelligence Advisor. That's the general practice, but I will have to double-check on this specific item. And would that likely include uh, certain ministers, departments, deputy ministers? Uh, Mr. Chair, the, the way that the distribution of intelligence works is that the departments are responsible to uh, their, the intelligence unit within departments to then make this information available to their ministers. So it would uh, maybe, be hard for me to know. Maybe the easiest way to go about this is, uh, would you, Mr. Vino, undertake to provide a list of the 35 Government of Canada clients who were briefed? To this uh, I will do that, uh, okay. Mr. Chair. Thank you for that. And uh, on... Uh, is there anything you can uh, elaborate on with respect to that briefing? Uh, Mr. Chair, I do not have the, the specifics of that briefing, but what I can say is that um, uh, at, uh, as an intelligence service, uh, working with our partners in Canada, as I mentioned in, in my remarks, but also working with our international partners, we have seen an increase in the sophistication and, and uh, aggressive nature of the cyber targeting by uh, China, including by EPT-31. Thank you very much. On August 25th, 2023, CSIS issued a second briefing, a classified intelligence assessment to uh, what in the timeline are described as relevant government of Canada clients that referenced the AP, ATP-31 cyber uh, attack. Uh, again, uh, would that have included the Prime Minister's National Security and, and Intelligence Advisor, PCO? Uh, do, you, do you know who those relevant clients are? Uh, 
Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, my answer to this question will be uh, the same one, the same as the, my uh, initial one. So I, I can look into the specific distribution. Uh, my assumption is that it would be, but I will confirm with the committee. Okay, so you will undertake to provide a, a list of who those relevant Government of Canada clients are. Thank you very much for that. And I would note that August 25th, 2023 was after the ministerial directive, which you alluded to, was issued on May 16th, 2023. Uh, so my question is, and, and maybe before I ask that, that directive provides that, quote, CSIS will seek to ensure that parliamentarians are informed of threats to the security of Canada directed at them. Uh, why were the parliamentarians not informed pursuant to the ministerial direction uh, so, Mr. Chair, I think this is, goes at the core of the issue. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the, in the cyber ecosystem, you have different actors with different responsibilities and mandate. Uh, we each did our work uh, in, uh, in collaboration, but also to a certain extent in parallel. And the initial information was not uh, emanating from CSIS, uh, was emanating from, from uh, our colleagues at CSE. And so we work with them to work with the House of Commons. So the, the question that you know, uh, the, the member is asking is uh, if and when would the ministerial directive apply to CSIS it is uh, an interesting one. Um, we are learning how we are adapting this, this ministerial directive. Uh, just, and Mr. Chair, if I could just my, finish my, on this, yes. I would say that the, the key point here is that the assessment at the time was that the information had been shared with the House of Commons in order to mitigate that threat. Well, it, it hadn't been shared with the members of Parliament, which was the basis upon which the directive had been issued. But nonetheless, CSIS was briefing uh, Government of Canada clients that were deemed relevant, presumably the Prime Minister's Department, the PCO. And you had said that although there might be other agencies or departments in tr who may be better suited to brief members of Parliament, but CSIS would have the role of facilitating or leading discussions around uh, arranging such briefings. So did that happen? Mr. Chair, I'm not sure that I would say that uh, I would see that the role of CSIS would have been to organize the, uh, the, uh, such a briefing. But I think what is clear in hindsight is that the outcome of, you know, for parliamentarians is not what anyone would wanted. And so my uh, uh, commitment with this com to this committee is to, to learn from this, to learn, work with the committee, learn from your, uh, your, the results of your work. And uh, in, with our partners, and I can tell you that uh, I, I was talking to my partners at CSE, we all have the same uh, objective, which is to make sure that in the future uh, we have, you know, looking and we're going to achieve a different outcome for parliamentarians. And I think this is one of the role, I would say, be, being very candid with you, working with parliamentarians through the House of Commons is something we all need to get better at. Uh, we, would, we normally go through the House of Commons. I don't want uh, members to think that this is a, uh, a cop-out by saying, you know, we share the information to the House of Commons and we washed our hands. That was not the, uh, at all the, the, the intent and the approach. However, uh, clearly, for the people who were targeted by APT 31, the outcome was not, you know, the one that people would have expected. And, and my undertaking to this committee is that, you know, with my colleagues, we will learn from this and make sure with our partners that we are achieving different outcomes in the future. I would also want to find out from you how things happened, just to see what kind of experiences we can expect to have if we go through this experience again. I so further, uh, this year actually, at the beginning of this year, Press Progress uh, reported CSIS was investigating foreign interference in the nomination race for a candidate from Oxford. They cited local Conservative Party officials had been interviewed by CSIS. Um, local conservative activists were visited by CSIS officials. So I, I kind of asked the same questions in, in that if it was shared with NSCOP, and I understand not wanting to comment on, on leakages, but the fact that these leaks continue to happen must be concerning, and I don't want to ask about the specifics of that, but overall, when we're talking about these processes and we're talking about leaks and we're talking about improvements, can you talk about that, uh, both um, the first bit of the question and the second? Thank you. Uh, so... so um Mr. Chair, I would say that uh, in this case, um, our assessment was that 
uh, it was investigative journalism as opposed to a leak in this uh, this specific story. And so the um, uh, I will obviously not be speaking to the specifics of our uh, investigative techniques uh, or, or investigative interest. But I think what is very clear is that uh, we have said publicly in our annual reports, in, in speeches, in appearances in front of this committee and other committee of the House and the Senate, that CSIS has been concerned with foreign interference for, for many, many years. It's part of our act. We have been investigating this. But what we have seen over the last number of years is an increase uh, um, uh, aggressiveness by a number of countries. Uh, the... the, the uh, uh, speed and complexity at which the threat of foreign interference is coming at Canadians, yes, to uh, at the uh, democratic processes, uh, elections, but also at uh, Canadians from different diaspora groups who are being interfered with in their democratic rights by foreign nations. This is something that is of, of, uh, of uh, uh, grave concern to CSIS, and this is why we have been uh, speaking about this both publicly and, and, and privately to government. And I think Canadians now, through the work of, of, of this committee and other committees and the uh, NSI Cup and CIRA and the Commission of Inquiry, are now getting a, a better sense of what is required. And maybe, Mr. Chair, the last thing I would say is that one of the best tools to address foreign interference is what we're doing right now, which is talk about it in public. Of course, I will not be uh, able to share classified information, but by having more public discussion about these issues in, a diff in different places with different people, this is how we would increase resilience against these actors. It's not gonna be CSIS you know, or the RCMP or someone else catching people doing it all the time. We hope that we're good at what we do, but it's going to be Canadians in their day-to-day -day activities that will raise the flag and say, hey, there's something happening here, maybe I should be talking about it. Uh, turning to the ENSICOP report, footnote 63 at page 17 of the report indicates that CSIS briefed the Prime Minister on February 9, 2021, about foreign interference activities by the Beijing regime, more specifically involving efforts to manipulate Canadian media, including, quote, paying to publish media articles without attribution, sponsoring media travel to the PRC, pressuring journalists to withdraw articles, and creating false accounts on social media to spread disinformation, end of quote. Uh, did you brief the Prime Minister on February 9, 2021? Was it you? Uh, Mr. Chair, I... I uh I do not have the report in front of me, but I will take the, 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 the members' word that it's indeed uh, accurate, the, the reference. I, I do not remember that specific briefing. Uh, I will have to double-check if it was uh, myself, someone from my staff, or uh, somebody else who briefed the, the Prime Minister. Thank you. And could you undertake uh, as well if uh, the Prime Minister had been briefed prior to February 9, 2021 on, on the same subject matter? Mr. Chair, we'll, we'll uh, take that under advisement. We'll try to see how we can do in different committees. We have Appreciate that. provided the number thank, of different uh, chronologies, uh, so we'll try you. to see what we page, can do. Thank you. Page 17 of the ENSICOP report goes on to state that the site task force observed during the 2021 election a coordinated campaign aimed at discouraging Canadians, particularly of Chinese heritage, from supporting the Conservative Party. It states, quote, Specifically, different Chinese-language media outlets in Canada adopted the language of a PRC state media article without specifically attributing it. Most of these media outlets were linked to the PRC via partnership agreements with the Chinese News Service, the Chinese Communist Party's primary media entity, end of quote. Uh, so, uh, for you, Mr. Chair, had a foreign influence registry been in place at the time those media outlets would have had to publicly register in light of their partnership agreements with the PRC, correct? Mr. Chair, um, I would, uh, I'm looking at my colleague here if he wants to, to uh, opine on this. Uh, I would have to defer the question to uh, my uh, colleagues at, the, at uh, Public Safety Canada who are devising the, uh, the, the current uh, regime. I would not have a uh, definitive answer to provide to this committee. Well, I would submit the answer would be yes, and so far, I think that far as it is an arrangement, a partnership agreement would be an arrangement uh, with a foreign entity, correct? I think that...
It appears to be, Mr. Chair, it appears to be the case, but again, I would not want to, to speculate. I, the, the, uh, I'm not uh, uh, the expert on the foreign registry. Our colleagues at Public Safety are. Uh, I don't think we could expand further on the nature and scope of, of when a partnership agreement would come into it to force under the current uh, proposed legislation right now. So I'm... I'm I think it would be a stretch for me to go that far. To okay. Well, I, I realize that you might not be the authority on the subject matter, but if one were to look at the legislation, um, it's quite clear that that would fall within the definition of an arrangement. And I, I, I would just observe that based upon the NSICOP uh, report and other information, including uh, through Global Affairs Canada and the reports of a rapid response mechanism that it is well documented that during the 2021 election, the Beijing regime ran a disinformation campaign aimed at discouraging Chinese diaspora communities from voting for the Conservatives. Uh, you would agree with that? Mr. Chair, uh, the, um, we, uh, through the uh, Commission of Inquiry uh, presided by Justice Hogue, we have uh, CSIS in partnership with colleagues uh, made public some summaries of information, including specifically on this information. So I, I think uh, to be uh, as precise as I can in res to respecting the, the member's question, I would uh, refer the committee to that uh, summary, which is the uh, using all of the classified information and the open information and coming up with the best possible story. So I think that would be the definitive uh, story on this uh, matter, Mr. Chair. And this came up in a CTV um, uh, exchange on June the 9th, just a couple days ago, where the the um, interviewer said that you had just uh, said that because, and they were talking about the leader of the Conservative Party, said just because your leader is briefed on intelligence does not mean that they can't act on it, which is what you've just said here. And the, the interviewer went on to say, in fact, it means that he could act on that information. You had last week uh, uh, when we did an interview, and the interview is with Mr. Chong, um, that this would not be the case. Um, Mr. Chong then goes on to say that I think they're not correct, referring to you, in saying that. Here's why. The Prime Minister is asking uh, Mr. Polyev to do essential, essentially to tie his hands behind his back. Here's why. The Prime Minister is asking Mr. Polyev to go through the Treasury Board's Secretary of Policy on Government Security. That's the same process that the individual uh, individuals on NSICOP have to go through. The process would require Mr. Polyev to sign an undertaking and swear an oath to secrecy not to devolve the information to anyone else and therefore not be able to tell anyone else to act on the information to hold individuals accountable. The host of the show then said, respectfully, am I supposed to believe you over the director of CSIS, referring to Mr. Chong, to which Mr. Chong replied, yes, you are. So I'm not going to ask you to comment on that because I know you're not going to want to weigh into this, but you have made it very clear today that if you do receive information, even if it is classified information, you can use that information to make decisions, even if it means you're not allowed to reveal that information. That is correct. Uh, Mr. Chair, that is uh, my understanding. Uh, I have a lot of respect for uh, Mr. Chong uh, and his uh, remark. I would welcome a discussion with him to uh, maybe uh, have, have a chance to, to better understand his point of view. Thank you. Just following up on Mr. Gerritsen's question, the Prime Minister has had the full and redacted NSCOP report for 11 weeks now? Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I would take the word of the DMP, but for, some, for a period of time, for sure. No actions. Okay, just just double checking. Um, given, uh, I, I would like to give notice of a of a motion, Mr. Chair, uh, in the time that I have. Um, it's just notice, uh, and and uh, and we'll be sending it around shortly. However, uh, given the recent findings of the NSCOP special report on foreign interference in Canada's democratic processes and institutions, the Standing Committee on Procedure and House Affairs order the production of all relevant memoranda, briefing notes, emails, records of conversations, and any other relevant documents from departments and agencies, including the Canadian Security, Intelligence, Service, and Communications Security Establishment Canada, concerning interactions with Conservative Party of Canada officials and representatives on the topic of foreign interference and its impact on the outcome of the 2020 and 2022 leadership races, provided that, one, both agencies tasked with, the gathering, with gathering these documents apply redactions according to the access 
uh, to Information and Privacy Act and to these redacted documents be deposited as soon as possible, but not later than Sunday, June 25th, 2024, with the clerk of the committee to be distributed to all members of the committee in both official languages. Noted? We've got it. Uh, I understand you're not choosing to move that motion, Ms. Matheson, so there giving remains... Giving notice. I, I have to... Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. So there Perfect. remains... Uh... I just said, I would like to say it's quite ironic that we have the NDP uh, jumping to the defense of the government, whereas we've come out with uh, uh, document production motions. We've been doing this for weeks. And each time the NDP voted in favor of the government to prevent this document production. So I think it's somewhat ironical to see the motion presented today by our colleague from the NDP, Mr. Vigneault. Colleagues, uh, we are going to suspend... Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, can I just can I just ask a, ask a question of my committee colleagues before we before we do this? Like, I, well, I, is this a, a point of order, Mr. Well, Wilkins, I, or? So I, I guess what I'd like to know is what the rationale and purpose is for... Moving in camera, uh, the uh, the director has basically said that uh, we want to have a pu public conversation with this. Um, Mr. Calkins, I sorry to interrupt, but uh, I, I'm going to suspend. We can discuss this while suspended well, briefly. Uh, we we do have. Uh, an agreement from the committee to be in camera. Uh, it's very unconventional for us to be discussing changing that Change. practice. Yeah.